Welcome along to Property Tribes TV where we are talking business planning and joining me on Skype is Steve Bolton, founder of Platinum Property Partners and also a landlord himself and Steve is ideally qualified to talk about creating a personalised property business plan. So Steve, why is it so important that landlords and property investors have a plan? Is it like a sat nav, you have to programme the destination first? Yeah, absolutely, V. I think, um, you know, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? Um, and I think to, to part of that is understanding where you're at right now, mm -hmm. you know, and then also no, it's not just about the future. It's about actually understanding, right, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm trying to get to. Now, you've actually come up with your kind of holy grail, which is yep. almost like a, actually a life plan, but can drill down to a business plan. What are your four pointers? Um, so, number one from a business perspective is most successful businesses are both profitable and sustainable. So, um, you know, they've got to make a profit, but sustainability is the difference between saying doing a property development where you make some good money, but then you've got to do it all over again. Um, as opposed to buy to let, if you've got a profitable buy to let strategy, it can keep going and it's a sustainable income stream. So, sustainable, profitable, sustainable, um, underpinned by appreciating assets. Property ticks that box beautifully. Um, in a tax efficient structure, comes down to your company structure and your tax advisors. Um, aligned with your personal and professional goals, you've got to have them in the first place to make sure you're aligned with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually added more recently a, a fifth one is that you can actually run the business from anywhere in the world, well, uh, that's whether that's through staff or through people. Absolutely, that's a great one to add, and so possible in the digital age as well, of course. Yeah. So when um, somebody's starting out, uh, what sort of form might this business plan take? Okay, so the format that we use with all of our platinum property partners is, number one, you kind of come up with a life plan. Mm -hmm. So the majority of people don't have goals for the next 12 months or five years or if you're a bit bizarre like me, I've got a 100-year life plan, <laughs> a five-year life plan, a one-year life plan and goals. Um, so actually getting clear on what is it, where do you want to be in a year, where do you want to be in five years, where do you want your business to be. And if you can think longer than that, great, but a good starting point is a one and a five year plan. Um, have some goals, not just financially, but about lifestyle, holidays, places you want to visit, things you want to do. Um, so, you know, a lot of people know about goal setting. Uh, most people don't do it. I'd really encourage people to do it. Um, but also where we work with our, our sort of life planning is on your values. What are your core values? What actually um, is important to you in life? Um, so I, I created a, a, you know, one of my values is I'm only going to work with people that I like and people that I trust. Okay, and if you set that as a value and you and you hold firm to that, actually you find you don't get stressed, you don't have you know major problems. You're dealing with people that you actually want to be dealing with. Um, so understanding your values, what I call your anti-values. So things, you know, bullshit, lies, um, <laughs> deceit, you know, being being quite frank, things that really make you quite angry and just making sure you don't do that and avoiding people that, that operate in that kind of way. So have your life plan, have your goals, understand your values. Uh, we help people create a personal mission statement and a personal vision statement as well. Really, really important. Um, and then you take that, what you want in your life, and you then say, right, what kind of business will help me achieve those things? Fantastic, because it is scientifically proven that if you write things down, you are actually kind of programming your brain. But if you create a plan, it's not something that you would write and then forget about. You would recommend that you constantly revisit it, tweak it, measure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. For me, in my own life, that's worked, you know, writing stuff down. I'm quite a visual person, so I prefer pictures. Mm -hmm. So I used to have like a three-page life plan that I wrote 20 years ago, um, but I actually find pictures work really well. So one of the templates that I'm going to provide to you and the Property Tribe members is a vision board sort of template in PowerPoint or keynote format that people can drop their own pictures and words into um, that work, works really, really well. Um, but absolutely, you know, I'm not saying revisit it daily or weekly or monthly. It's whatever works for each individual. Um, I have them as screensavers on my laptop. 
I've got some pictures in my gym at home where I'm actually looking at it on a regular basis. I've even got a digital picture frame uh, in my office. So when I come in, my vision board sort of springs to life and it turns on and it just reminds you. And I'm, I'm a great believer that actually you get what you focus on most of the time. And that's certainly consistent with um, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. One of the things that he said, one of the, the secrets of that book was actually be really, really clear on what it is you want and you're far more likely to achieve it. Absolutely. Well, some great tips there. And clearly an important exercise to do would be to work out your monthly outgoings um, and then ascertain how much money you need coming in passively to ensure that you can maintain or develop the lifestyle you want. So a good sort of starting point for a business plan would be to go through your bank account and um, add up all your monthly outgoings. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've got a, a nice one-page spreadsheet that we use, which, again, I can, I can make available if, if people would like it, where you basically list your assets and your liabilities, so your personal balance sheet, and that gives you a net worth figure, so the things you own, what they're worth, versus um, the liabilities and, and the debts associated with those things. Um, but then also income and expenditure and working that out on a monthly, on, a, on an annual basis. What's coming in from which sources? What are your outgoings? What, what's your net position? And that's just a, a really nice one-page spreadsheet. Um, and again, that's really important that, you know, I, I meet people a lot that say, oh, I've got the goal to have a holiday home in France and, a, you know, a super yacht. And, um, and one of the things I encourage people to do is, well, look at where you're at at the moment. Look at um, cost out your vision board or your goals yeah mm -hmm. and I and I did this once and I used to have holiday homes around the world and I costed it out and the cost of actually having all of those things was astronomical you know really big and then you sort of come back to it and you say well do I really need those things and what is the cost um, and the burden if you like of having those things because yeah it's fine you might want to earn half a million quid or a hundred thousand pounds or fifty thousand but the higher that figure is the more sacrifices there are, the more work you've got to put in, the more stress and responsibility comes with it. And uh, a great mentor and friend of mine, a guy called Charles Handy, uh, wrote a book, um, and it was called The Hungry Spirit. And he just talks about, as human beings, we've got this hungry spirit that we want more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, you get to a point where you kind of think, actually, time's one of the most important. The time with my wife and my kids. And I um, was always reminded by Warren Buffett, still living in a house that he lived in 25 years ago. You know, Ingvar Kampvard, who founded IKEA. Um, he's, he's a guy who still drives a 10-year-old beaten up Volvo. You know, so it's, it's not necessarily, um, you know, I need one car. I don't need a fleet of five cars. No, I think you, you, um, you know, know what you said about time with family is so important absolutely. because if you're working 23 hours a day, um, uh, you know, you're actually missing out on things to do sure. with your family. But yeah. I think the other thing, Steve, just to finish really, is to say that property is not a case of one size fits all. Different strategies work for different people. Um, you know, if you're a first time buyer, one of the things we recommend is, you know, maybe buy a flat where you can get an extra bedroom and rent out that extra bedroom mm -hmm. and be a live in landlord. It's a great way to kind of start. Yeah. You've got somebody with a couple of million quid to invest going to be a completely and utterly different strategy um, so how much money you've got your age your experience your risk profile your goals all of these things factor into having a personalized strategy because ultimately it's got to be right for you and, and where you're trying to get to if there was one book that you could recommend on business planning um, yeah. is, there, is there one that you would particularly recommend that would be relevant to uh, the property tribes community yeah, there's a great book called um, Business Model Generation. So this is not really about life planning, but if you want to think about your property business, because I think um, most people don't think about it as a property business, or a lot of people don't, they think about a deal. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the courses promote, oh, you can make 10 grand from this deal or 50 mm -hmm. grand or whatever. And actually, for me, property has always been a business, not about a deal. Yep. It's about having a business. Um, that achieves what I want to. There's a great book called Business Model Generation. Mm -hmm. um, it's very visual. It's very um, easy to fill in. And it basically helps you think about your business in a uh, using a one-page framework. And you can map your business. And it just tells you who your customers are, what the key partnerships are, the key relationships. And it will help most people probably think about property in a much more business-focused way. Um, great book. It's a bestseller. Easy to read. Um, you can go onto the website, uh, you know, they've got details, details on the website. And the template used for that 
um, is actually one of the things that I've provided to you for the Property Tribe members in, in the PowerPoint that we're, pro we're providing. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Steve. There's some really well, valuable insights there. And as Steve mentioned, we've actually created a business template for Property Tribes members that you'll be able to download and fill in yourself, which you'll find underneath this video. And also, we're planning a webinar with Steve whereby we can go into more detail um, about creating a property business plan. But for now, thank you very much, Steve, for sharing those really valuable insights. You're welcome.